let's assume you have this chunk of code here. And if you run this code, you'll notice that it takes anywhere from on my machine upwards of nine to about 20 seconds to run. And the reason why is because we're generating a sequence, which is like a collection, and we're turning it into a list. And we have, and this line basically says, hey, we have 50, 50 million items in this list. And then what we're gonna do is kind of do some operations over it. And then we're gonna calculate the average of some of the values in there. And then we're gonna print result and done. And so we can see that here. Now, one of the problems that we have with a lot of code sometimes is we don't know how long it takes to run. All I know here is like, wow, that was a long time to run. So how could we measure this? Well, what we can do is actually create a function called measure. And this function measure is gonna take in what's known as a lambda expression. And this lambda expression is kind of confusing. So it's called a block, and this is just a function. We're just passing a function in, and this function right here has no parameters, that's why it's an empty, it's like an empty parameter list, and this function is gonna return units. So this block right here, right here, this block is going to have no parameters, and it's gonna return a unit. So it's basically a void, so it's gonna be a void. So we can pass some type of function inside of this, this measure block here. But now we need to be able to measure that. So what we're gonna do is say nano time, and then what we're gonna do is say measure nano time and we can actually pass a block in there. Measure nano time, if we take a look at it, it executes the given block and returns the elapsed time in nanoseconds. This is built into the Kotlin standard library in the timing file. And all it does is it looks at the system nano time and then it executes the block. And remember the block, which is what we pass in, is just a function. So I'll show you how to pass a function in a second. We're gonna pass a function in. The measure nano time basically just grabs a nano time, then tells the function, hey, execute, do whatever you need to do. Remember, the function is returns unit, which is basically the same as void in most JVM languages. It's gonna return a void. And then at that point in time, it just calculates how long it took in nanoseconds for this function to execute. Because again, that's a blocking operation. We get the start time and we calculate the end time and that's how long it took in nanoseconds. So now we have nanoseconds, but we're not too familiar with how to work with nanoseconds. So let's go and get the milliseconds. And so we're gonna do time unit dot nanoseconds dot two millis. And then we're gonna pass in the nano time. That's how long it took. And then now that we have the milliseconds, we can just do print line. And then what we can do is say print ln. We can actually take the millis. Print ln and pass in the millis and then type in milliseconds. And what this will do is show us how long something took to execute. So how do we use this function right here? So what we can do, because this is a block, we'll just go up here. Remember, uh, and this is called a block because it looks like a block of code. And I'll show you what, what I mean by that. Let's type in measure and see how we hit the uh, code completion here. And it looks like these little brackets are, we like to call that a little block. And so right now we're in the block. This is the, this is the piece of code that's gonna get executed. So we can just provide these brackets here is a you know lambda expression. And the, anything that's in between these brackets is considered the block of code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take all this and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit and I'm just gonna drop it right in here. So now all this code that's inside of here, this area right here, this is the block of code. So remember, so this right here is what turns into this block. And then when we get onto the nano time, that's what executes right there. So anything between these two brackets here, so top bracket, bottom bracket, is the block. And all this code that's inside of here is what's gonna get executed and measured. So let's go ahead and do that. So now what's gonna happen is, we'll still run this code as we normally would have, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna run and then it's gonna show us how long it took to run. So if we run this now, execute this. Again, this is going to take anywhere from five to eight to 10 seconds. And as it runs, it's basically calculating it again, take a look here. Right now it's executing this code right here. It's already calculated the start time and it's calculating the end time as soon as it's complete. And as soon as it's complete, we'll then see the millis MS. There we go. Done. So we know that we are done. We got the result, which is the average that was calculated. And it took 18,244 seconds. So on my machine, this operation 
takes 18 milliseconds, well, 18, a little over 18 seconds. Now, it's important to note that measuring time and diagnostics for how valid timing is, is a difficult task inside of JVM. So this is a very important note that this cannot be treated as the end all be all performance checking solution. The reason being is the JVM has indeterministic garbage collection. So we could be in the middle of running this and for whatever reason, the JVM decides, you know what? We need to time, it's time to garbage collect. And that could happen right in the middle of your execution and might throw this off. So I don't want you to take the measure nano time as the end all be all solution. However, it is a very, very useful tool to kind of get a good diagnostic feel of, all right, how long is this taking? Why is this taking so long? And you can use this. So what I recommend is taking this little measure thing, you can kind of copy and paste it into maybe a scratch file somewhere or some type of uh, tool where you save some code snippets and use it anytime you want to start measuring things. Or you can put it in your project under like a utils and then decide if you want to use it or not. Now, of course, you probably don't want this in your production code, but it's very useful if for some reason you're like, wow, how long is this really taking? And then you can start determining, oh, wow, this is the, you know, and then if you wanted to, you could say, all right, well, is it really, is the measure actually, is it this piece right here? So then, you know, what is that? So we actually, you know, we'd probably want to take this out here and say, uh, want to take this list out and say list, var list. So we do a late in it, var list. And that's going to be a list of looks like integers. And then we can just do this. So then we can see how long that took. So if we were to run this now, we would see as it's generating how long it's going to take. So to generate the 50,000 and then turn it to a list as it's executing. Okay, so I'm going to stop it here. Now what we see here is that it took about nine seconds to generate that sequence. So then we could start measuring various different components here. All right, how long did it take for this other stuff? So if I wanted to, I can move this down here. Okay, that took nine seconds. Uh, how long does it take for this stuff here? Let's go ahead and run that. And then you can run this, etc. And then you're gonna be able to see how long it takes for each one of these things to be generated. Now, of course, there's a bunch of variables in here. Okay, we're not late, we're late, late initializing. Is that impacting it? If you're looking for very, very fine tuned ways to tune it, uh, this is not gonna be your solution. This will be just something to help you kind of gauge whether or not something is slow and how to do it very easily. So. Here we can see that the averaging itself takes about eight seconds. So generating the list took a little over nine, almost 10 seconds, and this takes almost nine seconds itself to, to calculate the average and print it. And that's how you can use the measure nano time to create a measure block, which then you can use inside of your application to measure chunks of code to see how long they take to execute.